Welcome to the Two Chicks Homestead Podcast. We are the Two Chicks. Yay! Hi, I'm Nate. And I'm Erin, and we talk about homesteading and living on a small piece of land. All right, everyone, welcome to episode 25. Yep. I'm not sure what this topic is going to be, but we're just going to roll with it. Yeah, that's kind of how it's been lately. So, the gist of the past couple days... We had an issue with one of the meat birds. Yes. So we have them in a rolling, we call it a tractor, but really yeah. it's like a dog, an outside dog cage yep. that we got from Chewy. I think we've talked about that. Yep. Um, and we keep them in the garage at night because it's not like it, predator proof right. on the bottom. Yep. So we roll them out every, every day yep. and into the grass <laughs> and clean up behind them. And so they kind of have to walk a distance. Yeah. And if you've had Cornish Cross before, you know that that is like the slowest thing ever. Yes. But we did have one that just would not move. Yeah. And we finally had to catch it. And we used um, like a a fishing net Mm -hmm. to kind of hold it so that I could move the rest of them. And then we put it back in and, you know, to kind of see how it did. And it didn't move. Yeah. All all day. day. So we ended up uh, calling that one. Yep. And the girls actually helped with that one. Yeah. They were out there the whole nine yards, and they were asking a ton of questions. Yeah. You um, did it in the hopper popper. Yep. Which works great for chickens. Yeah. So. It'll be nice to do instead of the craziness yeah. Dexter style that we did last time. Yeah, and I'm all <laughs> out there covered in blood. And <laughs> that was only the last one, thank God. But, uh, yeah, it's... It happens. I don't know what it was. If it was a, bro- a rip tendon yeah. or it just didn't want to move. Yeah. So. But I mean, that's why we get extra. Mm-hmm. We cut our losses. We yep. fed it to the coyotes. We didn't know what was wrong. And that always makes me a little nervous right. I, to not use the meat. And it was pretty small, to it be was. honest. Yeah. So I don't even know if it'd be worth breaking out the plucker. And yeah, all that stuff. The whole nine yards. So it just went to uh, feeding wildlife. Yes, Yes, a thank, thank you to the wildlife for not coming into our yard. Yes. Here's your, your gift. <laughs> Here's your sacrifice. Yes. <laughs> but. So, yeah, but, that was a, they did really good with that. Yeah. The girls, at least. Yeah, they walked down and. Yep, they helped, you know, they, we walked down the lane, throw it into the bushes, and they pretty much, whatever comes along, just snacks on it. Yeah. Um, and they're getting better with blood. Yeah. Like. Yeah, they, Ten times better. Yeah, they both wanted to see in the bucket and, you know, mm-hmm. just see what it looks like. And my oldest really wanted to, to butcher it and see the insides. And it's like, we'll be doing a lot yeah. in a couple weeks. Yeah, there's 12 of them out there. You are yeah. uh, you're going to see your chance of uh, guts and yeah. chicken innards here pretty soon. So Yeah, so we've got nine that we'll do then that Saturday for us. Right. And then three um, the next day. Yeah, we'll probably hold a couple back um, in case, because we're, we're kind of talking about that too. Maybe holding a couple. But we could always sell the ones that we've had processed already from Saturday. And yeah, not that's possible. save them. Yeah. At least they'd be done. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, to have extras, if someone wanted to buy an extra one just to take, yep. it's an option. That might work. I'll give that some thought. Yeah. So, what do we got next? Um, we've got a, the garden update. Um, lots of zucchini. Mm-hmm. Lots of cucumbers. Um, I actually have beans growing. I know. The one so sole my bean one, plant. <laughs> yes, my one pole bean plant, which I did not plant any pole beans, but there it is. Yep. Um, and I think I've got two other bean plants, but I think they might be be suffocating under the yellow squash so yeah that, i don't know that, that thing got like, ginormous those leaves are like bigger than I my know. head they're huge um whoops yeah well yeah that's a, a plant i did not plant there that's just a volunteer yep um peppers are starting to get flowers but no peppers yet um broccoli's just starting to get ahead mm-hmm. tomatoes are going Good, because we, we've never gotten ahead of broccoli. Like, never. We did. We did last yeah, year. Really? Yes. I don't remember that. Okay. Yeah, we did. I don't know that we actually 
We may have taken bites out of it outside because it wasn't very big. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I don't do well with broccoli, but it was one of those things that it was like, well, we'll try again. Throw it in there and uh, see how it does. Yes. Um, tomatoes, lots of flowers, but a lot aren't getting pollinated, so I'm mm-hmm. out there trying different things on... Your purples are doing pretty good, the, though. Yeah, the black black strawberry ones. Yeah, okay. And the uh, crazy berry cherries have a ton of flowers, as usual. And all of a sudden, those last year, I went out there and it was just like, tomatoes! Yep. So, I'm just waiting for that day. Yeah, the girls love those crazy oh, berries. They are so good. They're yellow, so they're not as, like, acidic. Mm-hmm. They're really good. Yep, yep. Um, and I don't usually do really good with big tomatoes so i've got a couple plants out there yeah i'll be um, interested to see because you have a co- the big slicing tomato, yes right? i have i have ger- german pink and red slicing okay so we'll see how those do cool. i'd love to have a blt yeah that'd be nice so I, was, I was really sad that my uh the purple ones oh, i can't think of what they're called but the, um, they're really big, and I had a couple of those last year. Mm-hmm. But the, none of the plants made it, so I don't know. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, and then we uh, started the, the hedgerow, too. Yes. Yeah, we have uh, some different things in there. Lettuce has started. I've got some strawberry, spinach, mullein I started. And I can't think of what else. I yeah, can't there's six in plants in there. Yeah. I know it's a couple lettuce, strawberry, spinach. One moulin, so there's got to be something else. There's missing. something else I can't remember. Um, and I pulled my beets out today because I saw some really big ones, mm-hmm. and then I pulled them out, and there was only a couple really big ones. So yeah, we is. may get like one jar of pickled beets, but that's okay. I want to dry the the leaves and maybe powder them, and people add that to everything and just get extra yeah that'll goodness. Work. So it's not a waste. Yeah, and you had to fight all the uh, the spiders with that, too. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> there were a lot of spiders. And they're like little white spiders. I don't know what they are, but... Yeah, I'll have to look those up. Yeah. Can't be anything bad, so... Yeah, but I think we might try carrots again one last time. This will be my third round of carrots this year, which I've... The past couple of years, I've had really good carrot mm-hmm. production, so I don't know... Yeah. What's going on with that either? But and then if we got the uh, broad fork finally built too. Yes, so I'll use that once it dries out. We actually had rain last night, mm-hmm. so I didn't want to do that when it yeah, was we got soppy. Rain, rain last night and the, and night, the night before, before. or in the morning. I think but overall man. it was probably an inch and a half. Yeah, that storm that blew through in the morning was uh, quite strong. Yeah, and it. We went outside. It was about six fifteen, six thirty, I think, and I looked up and I could see the rotation in the clouds. And sure enough, a couple, you know, half hour later, it's dropping a tornado in yeah. Naperville. And it's like, okay. Yeah. You can stay that way. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, all the comfrey is going nuts everywhere yes. in the bin, the IBC bin, and in the trial area that mm-hmm. we have going that has the, uh, all the, the gravel underneath. Yeah. So, we'll see. Yep. It'll be interesting to see how that does, because we did find a very large tree root in there from yeah. one of the trees. Yeah. Um, so I'll be interested to see if it spreads out, or if it actually goes, or if the taproot drops all the way down. Yeah, I don't know. Because if it spreads out, that'll be really easy to get that out of the ground. Yeah. And, you know, break it up to set, to sell, or repropagate, or whatever we want to do. Yeah. So, I'll be interested to see what that one does. Yeah. Um, I did have to go back, I don't know if this was last week or if I forgot, but the elderberry, I usually take mesh bags and I'll cover the mm-hmm. the bunches of berries. And I think I may have done it a little too early and they didn't pollinate. pollinate. Yeah, I, I took the ATV yeah. down and I noticed that. So I went back and redid a whole bunch. Um, so I think we'll still be okay. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. As with it's everything else. Trial and error. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've got, I've already got some messages about elderberry syrup. Got two, two 16 ounce bottles done last week. I have to do one this week. Cool. And then, uh, that's pretty, I mean, I had a little bit left from last year. So then that'll, I mean, it won't be it until we get more berries. So. Okay. That'll work. Yeah. A couple extra bucks here and there. So. Yeah. Something to do. Um, 
And then uh, what else we got? Um, chick number one got to use the radio. Oh, yeah. It was Youth on the Air weekend. I just about forgot about that. Yeah. Um, so Youth on the Air weekend is an ARRL contest where you try and, or kids under the age of 25, you know, I know, I understand 25 is not But 20, kids. under 25 is not popular in the ham radio. Yes, yes, it is not. So that's so, probably why. Um, so we sat down for, by the radio. We went over how to say a call sign correctly and um, kind of walked through the yeah, phonetic alphabet and how to say specifically my call sign and then the steps as you go through the contact. So I went, I spent a ton of time listening for an actual youth on the air station. And there weren't many that I could at least hear. Yeah. And I didn't even see any spotted on the websites. So yeah. So you'll get stuff posted up and they'll say, well, this is a you know contest station right here on this frequency and you can go make contact with them. I didn't see that. So in the morning, we sat down and started doing all this stuff. And I figured what better way to do it than chase the parks on the air people that are on. Because there's usually 50 to 75 people on the ham radio bands running Parks on the Air mm. any given weekend. And generally I can hear 10 to 15 of them from my area. So we were listening to Parks on the Air, going over some of this stuff. Um, uh, my mom actually ended up showing up. So we, we weren't, weren't able to make contact that early. So we spent a couple hours hanging out with them. Before they had to take off and go down, go somewhere else. But as soon as they left, I took it, you know, I went down, turned the radio back on, listened for some more parks on the air, and I had somebody coming in super loud. And that was Kilo November 4 Charlie Oscar Echo. And he was doing one of the parks, I think he was Ohio maybe? I thought it was Kentucky. Oh yeah, Kentucky. Okay. Um, I can usually hear like Ohio and Kentucky really good. I sat the oldest down and we worked our way through that. She listened to the other people call and then I held the microphone for her and I keyed the microphone up and I tapped her on the knee and that was her signal to call that station. So she would give out my call sign and the operator actually heard her, but he he heard somebody else who was a little bit louder. So he went after that person first, and he told us to hold off and wait. And then he came back to uh, you know made that contact, then came back to us and asked for the youth or you know the kid or the YL the female voice that he heard, and that's when I told her to, you know, tapped her knee again, keyed the radio up, and then she gave out my call sign, and he came back, you know, super loud, 5'9", no problem, I could hear you, he was super loud to us, so we gave him the same report, and then he sat down and talked to her for a few minutes, which was super cool, asked mm-hmm. her how old she was, if it was her dad's call, or her call, or, you know, grandpa's call. So he started with the grandpa, then he went to the dad, then asked if it was her call. Um, But she said it was, you know, my call, dad's call. And then, uh, you know, we said our 73 and he rolled on to the next next person. So we decided to go up and eat dinner. Uh, Came back down, did a little bit more listening, and I heard him again on a different band at the same park. So I called down again and said, all right, let's do it again. Let's see if we can get him. So we went through the whole thing, and he's like, ah, "You're the, you're the little girl I talked to an hour or two ago." And she's like, "Yep, that was me." So it was it was kind of fun to, you know, hear, hear that exchange. Yeah. Uh, one of the things he did do is he stopped after she made the call and made the contact to him to ask for any other use on the air. Mm-hmm. So he wanted more specifically because. Generally, these guys will get 100 people calling them at any given time. Yeah. And it's whoever's the loudest is who he takes. So he'll step back and, you know, say, is there any youths on the air? Call now. And if there are, 
there'll be those that are calling. Well, unfortunately there weren't, so he just went back to his pileup. But it was still kind of nice to hear that and her get the opportunity to do it. And mm-hmm. we took a video of the first contact. Yeah. And the smile on yeah. her face after the fact was... It's intoxicating. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pr- hoping... I mean, I think it excites you yeah and like the person you know this other caller to be like oh yeah there are younger kids kids. you know out there that are interested and and trying it out and Mm -hmm. it also kind of reminds everybody that there are kids listening (laughs) yes yeah um there are some certain frequencies where people don't care yeah uh it is what it is but generally it's a lot of fun yeah, and but I, that's, I mean, that's how amateur radio is going to keep surviving. Is yeah. Getting the, the next kids, generation. Yeah. So, um, we might have sparked the possibility of her studying a little yeah. bit more. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. She's not very good at focusing. So, so. yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that. I could see her getting her tech and then probably struggling a little bit for general. I'm struggling a little bit for general. So, we'll see if, uh, <laughs> We'll see how it goes. We got a couple other things we need to work on first. Yeah, I mean, she's only nine. So. Right. So it would be nice to have a nine year old get their tack or general. Maybe if it was shaped as a horse, yes. then that could yes. get her attention. I've already told her I'll give her a brand new radio. And she just. I thought you were going to say a brand new horse. I was like, wait a minute, we have not talked about that. Well, I mean, if that's what it takes, we can get a little. It doesn't have to be full size, it could be a, be little, a little tiny mini thing. horse. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so, but yeah, that was uh, that was Saturday. That was yeah. youth, youth on the air. Went yeah. for twelve hours. And there's another one then in December. So yeah, we'll December thirtieth. Which yeah, so it probably ends at five when you get home from work. So yeah, because that's <laughs> not New Year's or that's Eve. Uh, that's New Year's Eve Eve. Yeah, so I'll be working. Most so. likely. It is what it is. Yep. Um. The next thing is, I've started, um, the past couple of weeks, I've been posting an item of the week on Fridays on our Facebook page, Mm -hmm. and just kind of going through some things that, you know, we've purchased that I've used then and really enjoy and think that, you know, other people that follow might, might be interested. So we do use our Amazon affiliate link doing that. Um, it doesn't cost you any more. It actually takes a little bit of change from Amazon, Amazon and gives it yep. to someone that you want to support. So anytime you need anything, if you click on any link and then search for what you need, it kind of gives back yep. to us. And, yep. And, and we, we like getting those little things where it's like, hey, and we and we see what you buy, but we don't know who it is. Right. So, it, you know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, we, we may get a chuckle out of what you buy, but. Like, hey, look at somebody bought this but we have no idea yeah who it was exactly so it's not like we're gonna start posting up hey look at this right um but yeah it's kind of it's kind of fun getting that little thing like hey you just made some money yeah so yeah and whoever got the because we posted the dehydrator a while yes. back yes that was a nice little and that was a nice one so thank you for the person that i know that. who it is but i won't call them out so yep. thank you yeah so Hey, any little bit helps. Yeah. And we are actually uh, getting some listens on Fountain.fm yes. as well. Yes, and we really appreciate yes. that. Yes, that is huge. Uh, Fountain FM is the major podcast player, and you can listen to anybody's podcast if it's claimed. So ours is claimed. We have access to it, and it, we get paid in Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. You can stream some Satoshis to us as you listen, or you can boost it at the end. And I think for a little while, listeners were getting paid to listen. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a... There is a little bit of a catch from what I'm reading. They are paying attention. You know, they want to make sure you're not a bot. Yeah. So um, work on learning the Bitcoin lightning system. There's a ton of Telegram groups out there to help you out. Uh, One of them is Lightning for Liberty or... Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. Let me look at real quick. Um, on Telegram, that is... I'm scrolling through my phone right now. Sorry. Where are you? Yeah, Lightning for Liberty. 
and we'll drop the link for that as well. Yep. Um, and inside Telegram, you can if you have the Lightning tip bot anywhere, you can tip in in Lightning. Mm -hmm. And it is and super even fast. I learned how to do that, so I know. anybody can learn how to do that. Yep. Yep. So we're able to take money out of our Bitcoin wallet and transfer it over to the Lightning Network, and mm -hmm. that worked out really good. We used uh, the wallet of Satoshi and then moved it on a Telegram from there. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of neat that if you're talking to someone on Telegram and they give you, you know, a really good answer or really help you on something, you can just kind of tip them. Yeah, And yeah. it just goes right into their wallet. And Yep. So that uh, tip bot has to actually be in that chat that you're yes, in. Yes, yes. So you can't just... Yeah, a lot of the ones we're in yeah. have it going. Uh, Liberty Meat Chat, uh, Lots, Lots Project. Project. I think uh, I think it's in Tim's yeah, the workshop. So. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it's all over and it definitely helps. Like yeah. we have done a lot of that tipping back and forth. Mm -hmm. for Actually, I us. do forget about it. I forget to do it, so yeah, I apologize. We'll have to get <laughs> you some more on there anyway. But, yeah, if, if you could. I'm not going to request it, yeah. but if you could and you are feeling like it, if you find value in our podcast, go to Fountain FM. Mm -hmm. It's fountain.fm. Set up your wallet. Or any podcast. I mean, if you're already listening. Yeah. And see if it's if, if it's claimed, pay them. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people out there putting a lot of hard work in, and you know, they deserve it. So... If you could uh, help them out, that would be awesome. Yeah. So. We want to get to the main. Yeah. So. <laughs> homes. We love homesteading. Yes. Like. We love everything we do. You know, we do it because we want to. We don't do it just to put on a show. Like everything we talk about on here, we do it. Yeah. Like, we don't just listen to other podcasts and go, oh, we heard this was a good idea. Like, yeah. this is what we're doing. Yeah. And so... And there is, you know, actual things. There's evidence of that. Yeah. So, sorry, the cat's being a pain yeah. in the butt. He's up here walking <laughs> around on the table. Oh. So, it does get to be a lot. But we do it because... And we did it for a long time before we even started posting and talking mm -hmm. about it yeah so I mean we do it because it makes us feel good and you know we like growing and taking care of the animals and teaching our kids about you know where the food comes from and filling our freezer with stuff that grew on our little half acre property right. and so it is really fulfilling you know we thoroughly enjoy it but there are times <laughs> where you know, with on top of having kids and homeschooling and housework and just everyday normal stuff, mm -hmm. it just gets to be a lot. Yeah. And yeah. there are a lot of days that I just, I have a mental list of all the stuff I want to do and I just stand there and it's like, <laughs> maybe if I don't move, it'll just... I don't know, feel less, yeah, like yeah. there's less. Well, I mean, you you and I both got sidetracked today on different things. Yeah. Um, my biggest thing is I am right in the middle of helping you set up an app to log into our wireless router. Yeah. So I go downstairs and I go try and find the book, and the girls are downstairs cleaning the basement, which is a shock. <laughs> So the fact that he actually cleaned up the basement is A plus for them, and we didn't even have to say anything about it. I didn't even know that. Um, all of a sudden, they're like, well, can we play Forza? Mm -hmm. So for those that don't know, we have an old Xbox 360 here at the house, and that I have like five or six games for it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have a Kinect that has... A couple. So, all right, so maybe we have like 10 games for it. Yeah, but I'm sure 2% of the people out there have ever heard of a Kinect, so. Right. <laughs> um, so it's it's a lot of fun for them. Like, they'll sit down and play it sometimes. She's got one that she plays with a black cat. The Kinect is kind of like a Wii. 
yeah. system without the things you hold. Like it actually sees you moving, yeah. and yeah. it's it's fun. It's, it's active. It, it's the it's the Wii without the risk of throwing the yes. controller through the TV. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but they wanted to play Forza tonight, mm-hmm. so I'm downstairs looking for the owner's manual on this thing, looking up what it is, how to get the password to log into it. I never did get the password. I know <laughs> because we got sidetracked, and we're going to talk about that. <laughs> Um, so I fired up Forza while well, you were up here. I think you took like an hour long yeah, nap. I took a nap today. Um, and I set the game up and we did like the oldest and I, we did like an hour and 20 minute long race on Forza <laughs> <laughs> and we're just going around in circles. Um, so I picked like the longest track they had in there and it's like a 15 minute lap that you got to do. Um, I put like seven laps on, and we just figured we'd go see, until you win. Yeah, go until you win, and it was an hour and twenty-five minutes later. I think we finally <laughs> were done. But I mean, we we got sidetracked, but we have all this stuff to do. But the girls want to have fun. Yeah. So that's what it comes down to. Yeah, you want to get all this stuff done. But you gotta have fun too. Yeah, yeah. You need to like figure out, you know, what can just not be done right now, and spend right. time with your kids who just want to be kids sometimes. Right. So we um, after we finished that, we ended up have, uh, finishing dinner, or eating, sitting down, and eating dinner, and then you got the bright light to go up to GameStop. Yes, to <laughs> buy more games. <laughs> <sighs> so we, that's what we did. So. Before we left for GameStop, you realized you forgot yes, something. Yes, so I picked my beets this morning, like early this morning, and put them in a basket and was like, okay, well, I'll come back to this. And then I'm cleaning up dinner and the little one comes in and goes, mommy, your purple plants, they they fell, you know, they're down. I'm like, oh, they fell over? No, they're sad. And I walk out and they're like drooping out of the basket because it was probably like six hours later yeah. in the heat and yep. humidity and it was like oh my gosh so yeah I ended up finally cutting the leaves off and putting them in the fridge and getting the beets in the fridge and so it was a mess yep so that was a 20 minute delay before yes we, it was like oh shoot we got up there and then we had to roll the chickens in the uh, yeah back garage. in the garage so but we were ready to go and waiting for you to come out after uh, doing all that yeah so got both the girls buckled in in the car seats, yeah, and we had the waiting. truck running, waiting for my, <laughs> mommy to come out. So. But yeah, I mean, I think it's just there are some times where you just need to live and right. just do fun things with the kids because yeah. I don't know, it just gets to be a lot. I mean, we're busy all the time, and you need to make time to not be busy, right? And just do something that is not not even gonna like. I don't want to say make your life better because it does, mm-hmm. but it's not gonna mark off a box. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's most days I am up at five eight five five thirty six o'clock in the morning, give or take. Sometimes I sleep through an alarm and you end up calling me at you know quarter yeah. to six because yeah. my alarm's been going off for twenty minutes and I haven't gotten up yet. Um. But. This morning, I didn't even set an alarm, and we were up pretty late last night watching the fireworks. And I slept in. The oldest slept in. I wish you guys had yeah, slept in a little, little bit. the little one did not sleep in. Yeah. Um, so going to bed at 10, 30, 11 o'clock last night for the girls, um, yeah, they were up at about the normal time. Yeah, and she, yeah, she fell asleep a couple times today, I guess. Yeah, she was out here on the couch yeah. falling asleep. So I was going to try, but she's getting grumpy. So. Yeah, and she gets grumpy. Yeah, yep. So we just let her nap. Yep. But yeah, I mean, it's it's just trying to find that balance. Because if all you do is all the stuff you need to do, it gets to where right. it's not fun anymore. Right. As long as something isn't dying outside, Yeah. take your time for a little bit, especially if you got little kids. Yeah. And yeah, I need to remember this a lot because I don't. Yeah. I will admit it. It's hard. It's hard to put something off that, you know, your mind is, like, on track to do. Right. 
and someone needs another snack or wants to go to the park or something and it's like it's hard to not get huffy and puffy and be like okay well let's go yep like tomorrow i mean it's it's been so gross outside and we're all getting crabby and tomorrow was supposed to be like in the mid 70s Mm -hmm. so the oldest well both of them have been on a world war ii kick yeah so we're heading out to uh a Cantini. military yep. museum tomorrow. So. Yeah, that'll be uh, Cantini over in... Wheaton. Winfield or Wheaton? Wheaton. Wheaton? Okay. I believe so. That border's like right there. Yeah. Um, Cantini is really cool. That's the, I think I want to say the first division. I think so. And they have a museum down in one of the things where you can walk through it and see... How the trench warfare went through, how World War II was, some of the weapons they used, and they have a ton of tanks. On yeah, the big tanks you can all climb on, and they did have some of the beams from the Trade Center. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's a permanent thing. We'll have I, to see tomorrow. Yeah, we'll have to see. So, yeah, that was upstairs in the main yeah. display. Yeah. So but yeah, I mean, cool. it'll be fun. We haven't like gone on a field trip in a while, so. No. And if you can get in for five bucks at yep. the park, done. And it's 75 degrees out. Yeah. Yeah, it would be nice to have them run around. Yeah. I and wish I wish that was a Parks and the Air place. That would be kind of cool to set up next to a tank and yeah. activate. But yeah. I don't know what to see if I can ask or something. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I would imagine we could go there and activate, but we're just not going to get credit yeah. for POTA on it. Yeah. So. But yeah, and then so we'll do that and then come home and get back to business got some canning to do and yep just get the beats done and uh see what else is coming in through the garden yeah i can tell you what isn't and that's the gem corn yeah yeah that's a disaster (laughs) yeah i don't i mean we're and i'm i'm nervous i know um I've sent the seeds, the kernels out to a couple people, and theirs is, like, growing. Mm-hmm. But it'll, I'm really interested to see if it actually tassels and, and Does cobs something. or whatever. Because yeah. um, it is the, the kernels from the gem corn we grew. So Yeah. So hopefully I really don't it does. Know. I don't know what it's supposed to do. Yeah. So. We'll see. Yeah. But, yeah, we're not going to have any gem corn. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm hoping it just didn't cross pollinate with the stuff we had in the back, and that's going to be the issue. You know, like the Terminator gene got out or something from yeah, that stuff. Yeah, I don't know, but it's I mean, it's, it's it. growing normal, as far as I can tell, in other places. Yeah. So maybe it's just it could next be year. The soil. Yeah, and we did corn the gem corn in the same spot last year, so. Yeah, but usually you can do two, two years, years in a row, around. and then you got to change it. We'll take a break next year and do something else, sunflowers or something out there. I don't know. Yeah, it'll be something fun. We can always use sunflowers. Yeah. Chickens like it. Yeah. So I think that's pretty much all we got. Yeah. So the next thing we're going to give you guys is we have an affiliate link and affiliate code for Josh at the Renegade Butcher slash Liberty Meat Solutions. He's got a podcast that he talks about doing uh, meat processing and he ended up giving us an affiliate code for you guys and that code is two chicks so it's the number two chicks and that will give you guys one time use 10 percent off anything on the site she's got a lot of seasonings seasoning and shirts, shirts. And... it'll also give you for his membership hmm. it'll give you 10 percent off on his memberships so if you want to go check him out, um, that would be very cool. Uh, hopefully help him out. He's been on with a few people. We did an interview with him on doing our rabbits and then uh, Jack Spearco also. Yeah, he was on the Survival Podcast not that yeah. long ago. Yeah, that was a couple, uh, was what, about a month ago, two yeah. months ago, somewhere around there. Yeah, I mean, he's a ball of knowledge. So. Yeah, he's helped you numerous he, times. Yeah, I mean, he does mostly, what, like pigs and beef and yeah, stuff. Yeah, big but, stuff. I mean, he did the, oh, like a lot of the meat from Float Fest yes. down in Texas yep. this time around. Yeah, that. so the, the guy that was cooking and running the grill down there, that was Josh. Yeah. So uh, if you'd help him out, that would be awesome. Yeah. 
and uh, let us know. We will drop the uh, coupon code and the affiliate link down in the notes. Yep. We'll also post it on Facebook. We'll put it on the yeah. Facebook, and then we'll put it on our website, too, so if yep. you ever lose it there um, and you want to go use it, you just kind of click through there. Yeah. We'll start setting up all the affiliate links actually on the website. Yeah. So they're easier to find for you guys. I think that's pretty much about yeah. it for this week. Yeah, if we're not feeling like we did a whole lot this week, then... Yeah. That was it. All right. We'll see you guys next time. All right. See you on the homestead where something is always growing, eating, or cooking. <laughs>